Hi, and welcome to the third episode of Knit the Books. I'm Allie, also known as Crafty Allie. And I'm Vicky, also known as Nitty Vicky. We're back! We're back! Mom's moved into Cookville. I We're have. at her place today. I have. It's great to be back. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Allison and we moved here in 2000. Mm -hmm. And in 2005, Sorry. I moved away. So I've lived in several places, and my husband got the opportunity for a good job, and we are back in Cookville, and I'm doing the uh, commute. Mm -hmm. It's it's not bad, but it's no, okay. It's a, what, a little over an hour? Um, the longest uh, it I've should had, be a little. Over it an should hour. be a little over an hour, but for those of you who have ever traveled I forty through Lebanon out of Nashville heading east, then you know that you lose some time through there, and that's where it gets me. But it's fine. We're glad to be here. I'm glad that's to have exciting. her back. I keep forgetting, like, sometimes. Like, we'll be talking, I'll be like, oh, wait, you're, like, ten minutes from, from me. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of an hour and yeah. 45. <laughs> so, it's great. It's awesome. And I'm, my cookbook knitting buddies, I'm here closer to them, mm -hmm. and it's just great. I'm still tired from moving, and no, all my boxes are not unpacked. <laughs> we moved into our house three years ago now, and all our boxes aren't unpacked either. But most of ours that are packed up, like mine's like school stuff like, mm -hmm. that I didn't want to get rid of that I'm slowly going through and getting rid of because I have too much stuff. We've been I'm doing also that. a blonde now. I know. I love it. <laughs> For a little while. I love it. Actually, um, I, I've had started coming back to Cookville to the girl that does Allison's hair and I just love her. She gives a great cut. Mm -hmm. She colored mine and I really like her. Really like it. I think she did a great job. Yeah, it looks very good. So, I guess we can just get started. Oh, I want to just first do a thank you to um, Robin and Mary. I want to make sure I get their usernames right. Teeny Button and My Angry Orange Cat. They host the Cherry Pearls video podcast. They're also a mother-daughter team. Um, and I followed uh, Robin on Instagram, but I don't think I realized, hi, Murray, that she had a podcast because... I'm sure you guys know Instagram. I don't see everyone's post. No, I don't either. You know, I miss so a lot of stuff. I miss a lot of things. So I felt really bad that I didn't realize it. But I watched it an episode, a couple episodes, and they're really cute. I really like them, and I really I'll recommend to watch. them. I'll link them in the show notes for you guys. Wonderful. Murray's here, and my mom's dog's here, but she's probably no, she's, won't. No. <laughs> she probably no. won't show She's up. not real social. But Murray's here to see his Mimi, and he was so happy when I went out to get him out of the car. You should have heard him squealing. I lowered and, the camera so you could see him better. <laughs> yeah, he didn't know where we were. This is his first time here. So when he saw her, he like freaked out. It was so funny. It's real funny when Scott and I come in their house. It's almost like he's hurt. He's, his mm -hmm. squeal is so shrill. It's yeah, it's funny. He loves people. But anyway, um, so I just want to thank them for mentioning us. I really appreciate it. I want to thank you guys for being patient and for coming back to watch us again. Yes. Uh, we're excited to be here and we're excited to hopefully go back to our two-week schedule. Yes. Hopefully. Hopefully. I think... Marie says no. I think we're going to be good to do that. I, I think so, too. So, and if anything changes, we made an announcement thread in the Ravelry group and we'll just put it on there if for some reason... Something happens. Something happens. Well... Let's just get into it. So what have you been knitting on? I have not knitted a whole lot of any during this move, but <laughs> I am still... I finished a Lucy sock. If you want to hold that up, it's out of the Lucy yarn. And... Let me see. Let me, we, got a, we got a webcam so we could up our quality a little bit, and we're still trying to figure it out. I gotta block you, I think. That's okay. No, I gotta block me. I think that's how it works. Come on, focus. You guys get to see my pretty nails. I love your nails. They're so cute. Super cute. There we go. Oh, it went away. Anyway, these yeah. are Mom's Lucy socks. Yes, and then I am this far on the second one. So hopefully now things will get settled down here uh, and I'll be able to knit more on those. What's the yarn? I knew you would ask. <laughs> I, at this point, I don't even hardly know my own name. Neely's Knits. It's by Neely's Knits and I just love In it. And the, um, speed it up a little colorway. Yeah, way. speed it up a little colorway. It's the, one. it's for the candy factory. Mm -hmm. 
uh, ep- Lucy episode. <laughs> Actually, for those of you, if you've ever followed, Fal- is it Falula? Mm-hmm. That's in, is mm-hmm. it her that's up there and was knitting? And it's, she's, uh, I guess her and her husband may be on vacation and that was, she, they're in Lucy's hometown and she showed a picture. She was knitting, she had her Lucy bag and she was knitting on her Lucy, the same yarn, mm-hmm. her sock. And she had the picture of the old Lucy statue the and scary then the scary one and then, then the new one. Yeah. Which I don't think I'd seen pictures of the new one. It looks so good. Doesn't it look good? I've seen the scary one. We need to go there, Mom. Oh, I know it. Well, I've been knitting on a few things. She has been knitting. Um, I've been working on, I have a bunch of friends who are pregnant. A bunch of them. So I've been working on just a biased knit oops, I absolutely baby love blanket. That yarn. The yarn is Twist Fiber Studio in the Fruit Loopy colorway. I bought this on her, um, her very first Etsy update. And I think it's perfect for a baby blanket. It is perfect for a baby blanket. Mary, do you need water? He just rubbed my head, Mom. He's so spoiled. He woke up to come with me. So. Okay. <laughs> but I love how this is knitting up. It's pulling really cool. It's all the colors, and they're muted but bright at the same time. It's really mm-hmm. interesting. And um, the colors that she mentioned that she was doing. The yeah, Mom, Mom knows who this one's for. I know who it's for, and, and it's got several of those colors Mm-hmm. So it will. It won't match, but it'll coordinate. Coordinate. Yes. I guess is the word I want. But yeah. So I've been working on that a little bit. That's kind of been what I've been taking to work. Uh, if, if I have time, I'm falling. <laughs> if I have time to knit in the <laughs> car, Mark's kind of pushing us. Which up. I don't really have much because I'm working mostly in the town I live in now, so there I don't really go. have much of a break. But. Sometimes you do. So. Sometimes you do. You been knitting on anything else? I'm a, I haven't touched this since we moved either, but my pure joy. And this is my hedgehog fiber yarn. And I absolutely, this yellow, I love both of the colorways. But that yellow is not me at all. But it makes me so, so happy when I knit with it. And I absolutely love this pattern. And yes, I will make another one. I didn't bring my pure joy. You didn't bring it? No, I thought I brought it. But I just realized I didn't. Do you remember what the colors are? I know the the no, light t- the light multi is zephyr. zephyr and I don't remember. Oh, uh, weeble or wobble? Because yours is the other one. Yours is wibble. Yeah, mine's wobble. So zephyr and wibble in the, the yellow just makes me so hedgehog happy. fiber skinny singles. Makes me very happy. I love my pat this pattern. I um, I'll talk more about what I did on mine because I did some modifications, but I'm on the the border. So I think if I sat down, I'd get it done. But I've been Doing some other things. Um, she sure this has. This week. Um, I have some finished objects that I'm going to show too, but I'll show this one first because we're in whips right now. I've been working on hats for kiddos, which we'll talk about um, after we're done talking about knitting. We'll, we'll, before, before we go before, into books. Before we go into books, I'll talk about hats for kiddos. So I've been working on hats. I started this one. That's so cute. Thursday? Maybe. Maybe. This is uh, out of Northbound Knitting, her superwash wor- worsted in the Exo Moon colorway. I just have this bag. This is a Kiki Boo bag that Daniela Caffeinator gave me. Um, and I just have a bunch of scraps in it. And I've just been picking them up and knitting. Um, and I've been picking the colors up at random sometimes. Mm-hmm. So, like, we'll have cool stripes. Uh, and whenever I finish this bag, I, have, I found some more scraps because I've been going through... My yarn and trying to reorganize some things. I found some more scraps, so if I finish all these, I'll add some more. But so that's this one, and I've just been doing rolled brim hats just so I can just knit while I'm watching TV. So I think this one I cast on 68 stitches. And what size would that uh, be for a child? Toddler. A toddler. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm trying to make them a little bit big that mm-hmm. way they can wear them longer. Yeah. Um, they have been so cute. But yeah, so this one I've, is my whip. My Hats for Kiddos whip. And I, that's all I have for whips, apparently, because I didn't bring everything like I thought I did. So I could go into foes. You can't. I don't have a foe, but you, you can go on the foe, but foes. I love that bag. I have foes. Okay, first I'll show the bag. This was a gift from Julie and Wendy. 
It's so cute. Betty Boop. Very cute. I love it. So my first faux is my size. I love that. I forgot to write the designer's name now. I know her first name is Julie, but I can think of her second name. This is the Monster Chevron hat. It's so cute. I knit this out of the Color Wheel yarn in the Allison colorway that I got at Fiber in the Burrow two, two years ago when Mom fell in love with, knit, with yes. yarn and decided to become a knitter. Yes. Now, I had this hat pretty much finished, but it was a fitted beanie and I wanted a little bit more slouch. I kind of wish I'd added a little bit more, mm -hmm. but I haven't blocked it yet. So you might I be think able to... it will stretch very well. I love this though. It's I super love that cute. Too. I love this super pattern. Cute. She has um, a cow pattern, and I think mitts, ooh, that's a good look. Um, <laughs> I think either mittens or socks, socks, or maybe both, I can't remember, but they're all the Monster Chevron. That's cute. But um, I have yarn set aside to do the the cow soon. So, so how do you do this? I can't tell you, that give a pattern away. Oh. But, but it's, it's very easy. Okay. You could that, do it. Okay. Uh, yeah, because that's cute. That might... Mm -hmm. I love it though. I love the colors. But when I finished this, I had a little. We'll do a close up. I love those colors. It's happy colors. I had enough left over, and that's what started my hats for kiddos <laughs> uh, knitting. So, so cute. I did so this one. And it's a bigger. It's a bigger one. Because I followed the barley uh, stitches. I think. I think it was like 70 something stitches. I can't remember now. But That's this so is cute. this. So I got all, all the colors. Barely. There's a little bit of the purple. But I thought that was so cute. Look how cute they are together. They're so cute together. Murray, I wish you'd wear hats. I'd put this on you. you say I'm like, I'm just resting now, Mama. Murray does not like to wear hats. And so when I finished that one, I did this one in an evening. Like I started it after work. I finished it before I went to bed. Um, so after I did that one. I had a little bit of the purple left, so I started with the purple from the Allison colorway from Color Wheel Yarn. Then I added this, which I think is just called orange. These are Knit Picks Superwash mm -hmm. Wool of the Andes. I can't find my tags. I think this is just called orange. And this is called almond, and this is little bit right here. It's called Rainforest Heather. That is cute together. Mm-hmm. Very I kind of I like I kind of like the the purple in it too. I like the purple in it. And after I f did that one, oh no, that's it. But I have more of these three colors, so I'll have a bunch of these three. But maybe you can switch them up. Well, I'm just grabbing them at random. Like, oh, I'm are not you? planning. So you're yet. not even planning. So it. well, with this one, I'm just using the Exo Moon. Mm -hmm. So if I run out, I'm gonna grab the other mini. Mm -hmm. ball that I have but th with these I'm just mixing them up I only have a little bit of orange left oh okay so we'll see they'll mostly be the taupey and that greeny super color super cute but I think they're going to be fun and I might get bored with my my plan of just doing the rolled brim hats but I think that's perfect for me right now because <laughs> it's great like after work knitting while we're watching TV because mm -hmm. we're watching a bunch of different shows right now. So That's all I have for finished objects. I don't have any finished objects, all right. but I do have a new bag. Do you want to show your bag real quick? I do. This is a fat score bag. I don't got it. It is, um, I think this is the pre-order that she had for the SSK. Mm -hmm. And she had material left over and she had a big update a week ago. So, it's so cute. It is so cute. I love it. It's got the knit words on it and handmade. It's just very, very cute. I like, I love, it. I like it a lot. So, now you can talk about okay. hats for so kiddos. So now let's talk about hats for kiddos real quick. I've put the thread up already and I've been posting on Instagram and a couple of you have messaged me about sending in hats. So I wanted, I was going to do an, ep an episode, or not even an episode, but just me. Because um, I didn't know when we were going to be able to meet mm -hmm. again. Um, to talk about it, and it just never happened. So we're going to talk about it now. So Hats for Kiddos. This started two years ago with Caffeinated Knitting with mm -hmm. Daniela and me. And uh, what we do is I work as an early interventionist for the state of Tennessee. 
We work with kids from birth to three who have developmental delays, special needs, things like that. Um, now a lot of the kids we work with, you know, the families are lower socioeconomic statuses or they just have a lot going on and, you know, hospital bills get expensive and a lot of these kids go to the hospital a lot. So we wanted to do, we were talking at a, at Sock Club one day and I think it was Jill who brought it up. We wanted to do something fun for these kids. So we started, um, a hat and along. So we've done it past two years and we the first year everyone got one hat everyone got a hat with a bunch of leftovers the second year everyone got a hat we had a bunch of leftovers we donated I think 50 hats to a local Girl Scout group who sends care packages over to Africa and we donated a, one of the local schools the leftovers we took to the local school because they were doing donations for homeless um, families or, or the rescue Family Resource Center? No, the rescue. The mission. Oh, the mission. The mission. Um, so we took the leftovers there. So I didn't come home with any hats last year. So this year, I'm like, oh, we don't have any. You know, because last year we had a little bit of a buffer. This mm -hmm. year we don't really have a buffer. So we need a lot of hats this year. But our program actually, we, we're, we're not in as many counties now. But we still need hats. We still have kids. You know, we still have a bunch of kids. Mm -hmm. So, um... The guidelines, and I have them posted in the group. There's one part I'm going to change. I'll talk about that in a minute. The the hats must be knit and they can be knit, crocheted, or sewed in superwash or acrylic. Um, they need to fit ages six months to three years. Boy, girl, gender neutral, whatever. We'll find a home for it. If you have hats for bigger kids, we'll take those because we have families with siblings. One year, I was able to give hats to the grandparents and the mom and mm -hmm. the dad, like everybody. So that one was, that was really cool. Um, we're gonna do we're gonna team up with the local Girl Scout group again. So about fifty of the hats will go to them to send to kids overseas, and they do two years to fourteen years. So the bigger hats will kind of split up between us, our program and the Girl Scouts. Um, and there will be prizes. Mm -hmm. um, I have I I used the prize thing from last year. I copied and pasted it, um, but I want to change it just a little bit. Last year, every five hats you sent, you got a point. This year, if you send any, if you send one to five hats, you get one point. If you send six to ten hats, you get two points. If you send eleven to fifteen hats, you get three points. So that way. You know, it's Everybody's basically getting... the same, but a little bit different. So, like, mm -hmm. last year, if you sent in seven hats, you only got one point. This year, you'll get two points. So, it's a little bit different, but basically the same concept. We've had a few people uh, offered to make donations. Um, I'm going to be giving away patterns. Daniela Caffeinated Gert is going to be giving away patterns. Dana of Unwind Yarn Company has offered a uh, gift certificate to her shop. Ashley of Twist Fiber Studio is going to offer... Um, some yarn or fiber. I emailed her. She 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 said that she would donate something, but I, I haven't heard exactly what she's donating mm -hmm. yet, so it'll be a nice surprise. The lovely ladies of SoFlow uh, will be donating bags. Christian Crafter Tiffany has offered to sew up a bag for somebody. Valerie MVA5493 has offered a skein of yarn, I believe. I didn't write down what she offered. I wrote down that she offered something. Pretty sure it's a skein of yarn. And then Holly... Oh, no. I didn't write her username down because I thought I'd remember it. So give me one second. But I was talking to Pollyann1217 yesterday. And she's going to donate a skein of yarn and a set of Knit Picks straight needles. I think they go from, like, size 4 to 11. Awesome. Yeah. So I think I'm going to... Um, well, I don't think. I know I'm going to. I'm going to donate a skein of yarn. And I'm going to go through my oh, stash. Sorry. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to be ugly yarn. It'll be pretty yarn. <laughs> no, none and of this is ugly. No, none of it's ugly. Uh, I know sometimes people, it's colors that I thought I liked. And then I also am one of these people that i very fall color. Mm -hmm. So I have several skeins of yarn that are very fallish that are very similar. Mm -hmm. So that's probably what it'll be. And I have a skein of hand spun that I'm going to donate. So that I, that I spun it myself. So uh, you'll have until... I put October 31st, but I actually looked at the date, and we usually have our meetings the first week of November, or the first the first Friday of every month, 
So as long as they're to me by November 3rd, you think that'll be all right? November 3rd, because November 4th would be the day that I'd be handing out the hats. Oh, okay. Okay. okay so cause... November 3rd. So just, that'd give you a couple of extra days to send in hats to me. Um, and then I can take them on that Friday and give them out and everything. And then we'll do the prize one the next time, the, when we record after that. Okay. Um, I'm working on getting a P.O. box. Um, I've had a, some issues sometimes with things being delivered to my house. Uh, with being told it was delivered and then never got it, or it wasn't there and I had to call oh, excuse me. and then it would magically appear. Um, sometimes my stuff goes to my neighbors. We have like three different male people and our lady is fantastic and our boys are, I don't know what they're doing, but our lady is fantastic. She needs to train them or something. I don't know. Cause they don't, they don't know what they're doing. Like the other day I had mail, like five pieces of mail from someone from the next street over. So I just put them back in and flipped the yeah. <laughs> red flag up and went back inside. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, so if you can get them to me by November 3rd, we'll do our prizes that first time we record after that. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that anyone's asked about. Well, like I said, if, uh, so just message me on Ravelry. I will hopefully have a P.O. box set up by the end of next week. I'm going to try and go by Monday or Tuesday during my break, depending on how much of a break I get on those days, and get it, hopefully get it set up then. But that way, I don't want us to be like, hey, send it to my house, and then me not get your no, hat. not show up. Like, that breaks my heart. to go to the yeah. post office. Yeah, so... I'm sure you guys understand. And the post office will say, what is she doing? I know, they're going to hate me. <laughs> There's a guy there that I think already doesn't like me, so he's really not going to like me. He's really not going to like you now. Well, and I, I have no reason why I think he doesn't like me. I just don't think he likes me. <laughs> he may just be one of those people that's not really happy in their job. Maybe. <laughs> oh, and this is another thing, too. Um, I know I was forgetting something. When you send in your hats, please include... A piece of scrap paper or an index card that has your full name, your rivalry name, and your mailing address. Yes, please. That way I can put it all in the the thread or I can keep them all together because then that way I won't have to ask you guys for your addresses because it'll just be, it'll be easier. And there's been times where Danielle and I have gotten a package and it will have someone's real name but not their rivalry name and we're like, we don't know who you are. Or vice versa. Mm -hmm. If you want to send in hats but you're not interested in prizes... You know, just let me know when you ask for the address, and I just won't even put you in there. That's fine. I've had a few people in the past be like, hey, we want to, we want to send in hats, but we're, you know, we don't need to win anything. Totally fine. No, no biggie. So, there, so. I think that's everything. If you have any more questions, ask them in the Hats for Kiddos thread on Ravelry, and I'll answer them as soon as I can. Okay. Yeah, and it'll be her answer, not because I know absolutely nothing about it. <laughs> She's learning. I'm learning. All right. I feel like we are rushing through this. So I'm sorry if we're talking really fast. I feel like I'm talking fast. No, I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> I, I also feel like we should have so much more to talk about than we do, but you've been moving. I've been and moving. And all I can could, I could tell you about boxes that are unpacked and <laughs> still need to be packed, but we don't want to talk about those. And, like, we had some house stuff going on, but all that's good now. So, like, my knitting mojo is finally coming back, and I think yours is starting to. It's starting to. I think I will actually knit a little this afternoon. Scott's good. working this afternoon, so. Well, let's go on to books. Oh, my goodness. What, bu what books are you currently uh, I am I'm going to break your heart and make you talk about your currents, because okay. I know you want to talk about your finished. <laughs> I am reading a James Patterson. Y'all know how I like those. It's Bullseye. It's one of the um, Michael Bennett ones. You know, he has all the different ones. This, is, it, this one's great. And I'm also <laughs> listening... On the ride, the drive, mm -hmm. and they laugh at me at work because I'll say, "Oh my gosh, I can't wait to get off work. I gotta get back out in the car and find out what happens I'm, next." I'm the same way. Yeah, I've and, said it at a visit before and been like five minutes late, and I'll be like, "Sorry, I was listening to a book." And yeah, it's like, I was at the end of the chapter, and if I came in here, I'd be wondering what was going on. Yeah. And they they understand. I keep it open in the seat behind beside me with the next desk <laughs> already out and laying in the little ledge, so all I have to do is switch it out real quick. That's. But this one is for people that like Catherine Coulter. This is her nemesis. It's the FBI series series of. Um, it's 
the FBI team. It's the husband and wife team of Lacey Sherlock and her husband's is named Savage. And there is, I don't know how many of these books um, of these two. And I, it's been a long time since I've read one of theirs and I saw I've this at the library. You ever heard of her? Um, it's been a long time since I've read any of hers. And so that means you don't have to read them in order. So mm -hmm. I was able to pick it up from remember who it was. But it's so funny because... It, it says June 2016, so is it new? It's new. These are both new because I went... To, yeah, um, I think you're... No, you're talking about a different James Patterson. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Well, he has new ones coming out all the time. Uh, I I work on a, at a college, and we have a library on campus, so I walked over there because I finished one that we'll talk about in a few minutes. Um, if I let her. If she'll let me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I've well, got to have something to listen to on the radio. I don't have to listen to the radio anymore, so I went over at lunch, and it was they have a section of brand new stuff that come mm -hmm. in, and they had both of these. So Cool. But I told my Scott, I asked me how it was going, and he said, well, how do you like reading and listening to one? I said, well, they're both kind of mysteries, and in a few minutes, it's almost like they're mm -hmm. overriding each other, but they're really not overriding each other, but it's kind of funny. When I do that, I have to try and be do dif different genres mm -hmm. or like ones from like a male point of view ones from a female point of view like it has to be somewhat different or I'll mix the stories mm -hmm. up but it's hard for me because I only like certain genres I'm very picky with my genres I like literary fiction I like thriller like psychological thrillers and that's about it like I'll listen to other things like I like memoirs especially I prefer to listen to memoirs if the person who wrote it is the it's one who really read it, it yeah. yeah I love that I love that so much so but yeah. Well, I'm currently... So what are you oh, current? Um, I'm reading on my Kindle Under Different Stars by Amy Ann Bartle, B-A-R-T-O-L. I won this on a Goodreads giveaway. Oh, good. It's a young adult dystopian thing. I don't remember entering this giveaway, I'm going to be honest. The cover's pretty, so it's very likely that I entered it because the cover was pretty. Mm -hmm. I judge books by covers. I find a lot of good books this way, though. I miss out on some good books, too, sometimes, though, because their covers are ugly. But anyway. Um, I started it. Uh, it says I'm 14% done on Goodreads. It's not very good. Uh, it's not very good. I'm going to keep... But at the same time... Give it some more time? At the same time, though, I'm not done with it. Like, I'm like... I'm not, like, at the point where I'm like, well, I don't want to read that anymore. Mm -hmm. So, there must be something I'm liking, but it's really weird. But I'll read the thing about it real quick. Winner of four 2014 Utopia Awards, including Best Book of the Year and Best Sci-Fi Book of the Year. Cricket, Cricket Hollowell never wished upon stars. She was too busy hiding in plain sight, eluding Chicago's foster care system. As her 18th birthday approaches, she now eagerly anticipates the day she'll stop running and finally find her place in the world. The day comes when she meets a young Aetherian soldier named Trey... something who has been charged with coming to Earth to find Cricket and transport her to her true home. As danger draws close, he must protect her until she can wield the power she cannot use on Earth, and he soon realizes that counting a galaxy of stars would be easier than losing this extraordinary girl. I get so tired of love stories. I'm going to talk about a book that I finished, and I'm going to complain about the love part of it. Not because I hate love. I just get tired of it as a plot device. Sorry. Maybe I do hate love. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, I don't, by the way. I don't think you guys think I mean that. Kion Ensign. I don't know how to pronounce any of these names, by the way, as you can see. Knows the powerful depths of Cricket's gifts. Gifts he'll control when he takes her for his tribe and leads the forces that will claim Ether and destroy his enemies, starting with Trey Alaris. Now Cricket faces the most difficult choice of her life, whether to wage a battle for survival or fight for love. Now, as far as I can tell, this isn't going to be a love triangle thing where she's like, do I like Trey or do I like Kion? I hate that. I love the Hunger Games, but come on. You know what I mean? But, uh, yeah, it doesn't seem like it's going to be that. But at the same time, it's like, oh, why does she have to be in love with anybody? I get it, you know, young adult. That's just what they are. Mm -hmm. Dystopian novels, there needs to be, I guess, a happy part where, you know, oh, look, even in, during all this crap, there's love, I guess. I don't know, but <sighs> at the same time is, is what I it have to say. It doesn't sound it's, like uh, anything I would like to read. No, and I'm only reading it because I want it, and I'm going to give it a shot. So in the first chapter, you learn that she is an orphan, and she was in foster care, and she had a hard time throughout it. She... 
when you cut her hair, it turns black and turns into ash, like the part that you cut off, and that freaked everybody out. She has purple eyes, um, and that's how she can she knows that these other guys that run into her, they have purple eyes too, so that she's like, oh, and I don't know. It's weird. I don't even know what to say about it. It's weird. I want to like it because the cover's pretty. <laughs> Might as well give it up. <laughs> I know. I'm gonna try it though, and Keep going. I'm gonna try it. Like I said, because I'm not completely done with it. Mm -hmm. So there's something about it where I'm interested, and it might just be where I'm trying to figure out like where where's the plot exactly. Mm -hmm. But where I stopped reading, uh, she had left with Trey and two other guys whose names I don't remember. No, I don't remember. I thought I thought for a second, but um, and they're I guess heading back to their planet world. Mm. I don't even understand like where they are. Like no. if it's another planet, if it's another dimension, I don't know. Mm. I haven't figured that part out yet. But I'm trying. And uh, the thing I'm, I'm listening to Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman. That's that book that we're, we're supposed to be reading for this summer that I haven't picked up since we talked about it. I have it on my Kindle and I started I couldn't get into it on my Kindle. And I was, and I was thinking about it and I was like, oh well, that, that read-along ends at the end of this month. And I was like, oh, I need to work on that. But I haven't been wanting to read it. And so I was like, I'm going to use an Audible credit and get it. And so that way I can do both. Because Kindle and Audible, you know, they're the same company. So if I listen to it on Audible and then want to read it on my Kindle later, it will be in the same and spot. pick it up. So I love that. I don't do that too often, but I love that. So I got it, and Neil Gaiman's reading it to me. And I'm like, okay, I'm good now. Okay. Because he's such a good reader. And so I listened to about an hour of that yesterday. Maybe. Maybe not that much, but I'm an hour or two in, and I'm liking it better as an audiobook, so I think I just needed to get the right format mm -hmm. for me. So that's what I'm going to listen to next week for my commute. Um, I have that on the Overdrive mm -hmm. app, and it's a, a list, an audio one. You still haven't got it? I still haven't. Well, of course, I've switched libraries, mm -hmm. so I kind of lost it. I think Daniela was on the list for it, too, and she ended up just buying it. Mm. I saw it on her table when I was there yesterday. Okay. So is that all you're to reading? <laughs> That's on? on my current. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, have, I haven't been reading very much. I haven't finished reading a book, but I have finished listening to two. Uh, one of the first one was uh, "Me Before You." I'm I'm glad she listened to it. I want to hear her opinion on it. So um, I'm excited that she went ahead and listened to it because just I, to reference back to I, I think our first like episode, baby. Oh, really. Just to reference back to my, our first episode, I'd started reading it and decided that it wasn't for me. So mm -hmm. I'm curious to. I enjoy really. I don't know if I. I don't know how well I would have done with reading it either. You think uh, you wouldn't have liked it? I don't think I would have liked it as oh, okay. much because it was, you know, somebody's reading to you. Um, but it was good for those of you that love it. It was okay. It was okay. It, it broke my heart. Mm -hmm. And uh, for those of you who've gone see the movie, I have no desire to see that movie, none, because it did break my heart mm -hmm. so bad. Um, I have though on Audible for this month's credit, I did, I got After You, mm -hmm. which is the story of her continued on after he's gone, because he, I'm not going to tell what all happened at the end, but he set some things up for in place, and um, it was good and. I would have liked it better had they ended it differently. Mm -hmm. I just did not like the way it ended. Because mm -hmm. yeah. it was, there was funny parts in it and it, 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 was, it was okay. The more you talk about it, the less you seem to like it. <laughs> At the end, it yeah. just, the way it ended, it just... Endings will kill a book for me sometimes. It, yes, it did. It did. Uh, because she wasn't enough. And that kind of did me in. Um, there have been times where I've read a book and been like, five star, five star, and then the ending, and I'm like, three stars, what just happened? I know. <laughs> really? It's like, oh, you had such a great idea, and then you didn't know how to end it. Uh. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, anyway. And then my other finished is, um, Laura, uh, my oldest, Allison's sister, had read, uh, Nora Roberts' The Obsession. Uh, it's got a glare. There it goes. It's better. Uh, this summer, and I found this at the library and grabbed it and listened to it, and oh my gosh, it was wonderful for that. I don't know, there were people that, and maybe it's because I listened to it too, but there were people that didn't give it five stars, and I 
would give it at least four. I thought it was a very, very good book. Some of it was predictable, yes, but it, it was awesome. Predictable it was love. It was bad, mystery, though. but it was love. So, mm -hmm. you know, a love story in there, too. So it was really, really good. It started out when, uh, child, when the main character, the girl, the, the, the leading lady, I guess you call her, uh, was a child. Mm -hmm. And things that happened in her family that her father had done and that sort of thing. And then he followed her through on up to her adult life. And it was pretty good. It, I, and I laughed because uh, one of the reviews about it, because she bought an old bed and breakfast mm -hmm. that overlooked... I guess the ocean or something, a lake or something, and she was remodeling it. So when one of the people's reviews put for you HGTV fixer upper people, you know, you'll love actually love parts of this. So, oh, but I, it was it was really really good. And because some of you probably saw me make a face, um, I was looking on here to make sure we were still recording, and I thought it said we've been recording for two hours, and that's why I was like. What? <laughs> Is, we've been doing what now? <laughs> I read it wrong. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> we have not been recording for two hours. Good. Which I'm sure you guys realize, and hopefully you <laughs> realize too. So I finished two books this week. The first one was a Kindle book that I read with my... We do... I have a, um, a little Facebook group that's uh, reading short novels mm -hmm. and novellas. Um, the book this month we picked was The In-Between by Marina Cohen. And I actually heard about this book first from Sarah Shu of the Cultivate and Create podcast. It's another young adult book. It's about a girl who had some rough things go on in her life. And her best friend's family was getting ready to move. And her parents let her go with them. Like, at the end of the summer, like, she was going to spend some time there mm -hmm. with them. And then, I don't remember if the, her parents were going to come get her or if they were going to drive her back. But anyway, she was going to spend some time with her best friend before summer started because they'd had a rough year. And uh, they ended up staying at this place called The In-Between. And it's just this, like, little creepy hotel. And, like, oh. the parents go missing. And uh, then her best friend's brother goes missing. And these people are just, like, they're just a little off. And it's really interesting, though. And there's, like, this really cool little twist, and um, I was talking to a friend of mine who um, is in the group, we were talking about it today, we were like, imagine reading this as a middle schooler, and this is the first time you read a book that had like a twist like that, because we were talking about how, you know, we, we could see where it was going, like how cool and how scary it would have been, like as a 12 or 13 year old, mm -hmm. but it was really good, really well written, not a lot of character development, I don't expect a whole lot of that, especially in young adult books, and I know there's not a whole lot in short stories in general, but I love character-driven books that I, um, I tend to like literary fiction because they're more character-driven than plot-driven. I just like, I like that more. Mm -hmm. That's something that Max and I disagree completely on when it comes to books. He doesn't like pretty much, I don't think he likes any books that I read <laughs> because I like a lot of character-driven books. Um, I don't read those all the time because a lot of times those are really draining to me mm -hmm. because it's like, you spend so much time in people's heads, I guess. I don't know. But those are the kind of books that I like. But it was really good. I gave it four stars on Goodreads. I highly recommend it. Uh, and that's The In-Between by Marina Cohen. Really, really good book. And then I finished this week listening to The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. I gave it four stars on Goodreads. I talked about this last time a little bit. Um, I had started reading it in 2013 and could not get into it could not get into it and I keep seeing like all these people say how good this book was and like it's their like their favorite book and blah blah, blah. and I was just like y'all are weird that was an awful book um but I was like you know what maybe if I listen to it mm -hmm. try the format uh the audible version is read by Jim Dale who does the who does the Harry Potter books and he is fantastic he saved that book for me it was so good there's it's um I talked about this I guess the last time but it's about this circus that comes up at night, and it's just, like, these really cool, different, like, a different kind of circus. And it's about the people at the circus. It's about the people who made the circus. There's this other story that... It's almost like the other story is really the main story, but it's written about, like, the 
B story. Like, the circus is the main story. Mm-hmm. And the circus is kind of its own character, which is kind of cool. Um, but there's these two people who are battling each other, but they don't understand, like, what it is. And then mm-hmm. there's, there's a love story in it, and the love story could have not been in it, and I would have been fine. I also didn't really like the guy, Marco. So maybe if it wasn't Marco that it was part of the guy, <laughs> maybe it wouldn't have bothered me as much. But I just didn't. It felt, especially at the end, just felt. I don't know. Like it was just there. Mm-hmm. Like it didn't feel real to me. Like the rest of the story did. Like it was just an added thing mm-hmm. that really didn't need to be in there. Yeah, like it was just another part of the story. But the, and it just wasn't interesting to me. The circus was interesting to me. The people who worked at the circus were interesting mm-hmm. to me. Celia and, like I said, Marco wasn't really that interesting to me anyway, but Celia was interesting to me as a character, but not as part of a A thing with Marco. I don't even want to call them a couple, really, but I don't know. So that was really my only kind of negative with it, and it's not even really that much of a negative. It's written very well. It's kind of prosy, but not completely prosy. Um, Prosy. What a weird way to word that. But you guys know what I mean. Um, But I really liked it. I would recommend listening to it if you have tried it in the past and didn't like it. Um, Just because I've had a few other friends say the same thing where they tried to read it and they couldn't get into it, but they listened to it and they loved it. And they loved it. Like it went from a, you know, did not finish to a four or a five star depending on the person. So... Sometimes it's just you got to find the right format for you for mm -hmm. the different stories. I'm really enjoying listening. It makes my... Now, I can get there in the morning in an hour hour and ten minutes. Mm -hmm. It's the afternoon. There's just so much traffic coming through Lebanon Mm -hmm. that it's... The best I can do is an hour and a half. But that's fine with me. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's okay. There's people that have... Shorter distances that drive are in their car a lot longer than I am in mine. So, I can't mm-hmm. complain. Yeah. So, it's, I, I don't want anybody to think I am complaining. I, it's it's good listening time. It's like, e- yes, the book. I just had an idea that well, I'll talk to you about off camera film. Okay. Just to see if it might be shorter for you. But it might not be. Who knows? Okay. Um, That's all I have. Is that that's all, all have? I have. Well, we weren't at two hours. Like I thought, but no, that's fine. I don't think you guys would appreciate a two-hour-long <laughs> thing. So, uh, we'll plan on coming back in two weeks. In two weeks. Hats for kiddos. Knit us hats. So like I said, if you have any questions, you can ask it. I, I'd rather you ask it in the thread, just in case someone else had that same question. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you want to, though, you can message me on Ravelry. I can be found on Ravelry, Ravelry and Instagram as Crafty Alley. C-R-A-F-T-I-E-A-L-L-I-E. And I'm on there as Nitty Vicky. All right. Let's do that again. I can be found on uh, Instagram and Ravelry as Crafty Alley. And I'm on Instagram and Ravelry. I can't ever say it. Let's try it again. I know that's hard. You can find me online as Crafty Alley. And me online as Nitty Vicky. Thanks for joining us. Hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.